Hey everyone, it's another quick video. Um, it's come to my attention that a few people are having problems installing Salient and I believe those problems are due to upstream changes with KPM Core 3 and the switch over to KPM Core 4 which has introduced some regressions and as a result of that that's impacting Calamari's partitioning engine and it's the same engine that drives the KDE partition manager KPM core well Calamari's depends on that and I've noticed there's a few things happening which aren't quite right if you try to erase an already partitioned disk for example that can error and Calamari's will quit it will tell you that it cannot create the new partition layout there is a workaround and what you need to do is go into gparted here you can see the partition layout that I've chosen so what I'm going to do I'm going to erase this partition layout all right so we've got nothing left it's just a blank partition now obviously on VirtualBox it's a lot easier but this this should transfer over to metal if you do it on hardware right so i'm going to start by creating a 512 meg boot partition i'm then going to give that a as this is quite a small vm i'm going to give it a 10 meg root partition and I'm going to allow the rest of that to be for my home partition right and as you can see there's no boot flag yet so we go back to the boot partition I have to apply that first let's apply that layout okay that's done now obviously on hardware this is going to take a little bit longer on VM it's very quick go to manage flags and just click boot it's irrelevant now whether you're ESP or boot because those flags have now been combined and that's the drive set up now okay so I'm going to quit that and now I'm going to choose install salient OS change to UK English and this is where things can go funny okay I don't want to erase anymore because I've already manually set up this partition so I'm going to choose manual okay the only thing I have to do again in here is to reset these flags but I'm going to use keep I don't want to format because I've just done that so that's going to be boot this one's going to be root and this one's going to be home now in this example I'm not going to be using a swap I'm going to tell it the boot partition that's the one we've just created let's just put some details in so we can move forward And you can see what that's going to do. It's going to set up the partition, it's going to install to SDA2, and it's going to set up the home partition. It's not going to format anything because that's been done. I've told it to keep them. So now it should go straight up to filling up file systems. Okay, so there's no formatting happening here. We've done it in Gparted. All right, so I'm going to pause this, and when it gets a bit further down, I'll come back and I'll show you what you may need to do afterwards because of a I'm, I think a bug in calamari okay so we're back this got past the the main bulk of the file copy now and you may have noticed in the latest versions of salient I've switched from unsquash FS it still exists in the system but I'm doing a file sync copy across now which seems to be a little bit faster just generating the locales 
creating kernel in it around my first image. Then we should see the user get created and then the bootloader being installed. And this is what I want to show you is that the bootloader is not being configured correctly. It should be in this instance because I'm manually partitioned, but if it isn't, And with the NVIDIA version now, the installer itself is installing the NVIDIA drivers. And we should be able to see that. There they go, they've gone in now. Just to try and save a bit of space on the ISO. So this shouldn't take too much longer now. And at the same time, it's removing Calamari and associated dependencies because they no longer need to be on the target system. And it's doing some backend cleanup to get rid of live user environment stuff that doesn't need to copy over. So this shouldn't take too much longer. It's also doing a full system upgrade on the target, which is why there could be a bit of a delay here. As you can see, there are updates, but when I reboot, there shouldn't be any updates. So I'm going to pause this and I'll come back when that's completed. There we go. Now the bootloader is being installed. That appears to have happened. And there we go. All done. All right. So what you'd need to do if you're doing this on the metal is go back into GPARTED Ed. And just make sure the boot flag is on. What you may find on the metal is that the boot flag has not been set. So you'd come down to manage flags and just enable it. Or if you're doing UFI, UFI, <coughs> you check ESP. But those flags are now unified. So boot and ESP are under one flag now. So if I shut this VM down, remove the ISO and reboot we should have a grub menu we do so that's a successful boot I've also removed the x86 Intel video driver because this can cause conflicts when running with NVIDIA and this could be the primary cause for the blank screen that people are experiencing. However, there is a script in included with Salient in session and startup, application auto start. You can see there's an NVIDIA start here. Now by default, the path to that is set deliberately wrong in the session and start up because we don't want that to start because I can't ascertain your monitor setup ahead of time you know it's impossible for me to know that so let's just switch this to single monitor well it doesn't really matter actually it's just an example so this is the script it's very simple you've got a one monitor setup string here and a two monitor setup string here as an example let's just maximize that to make it easier to see so what you need to do you come into accessories i believe no settings a r and r run that and it will tell you obviously this is a vm so it's going to show me vga1 but it will show you your, your monitors here, the layout and their names. 
So what you need to do is take note of the name of your monitor and change it here and here. So obviously I'm running DisplayPort on my primary monitor and HDMI on my secondary monitor. So these are just examples. And what these do, it not only defines the layer, but it also turns on force composition pipeline and force full force full composition pipeline on both displays for the NVIDIA drivers. And this script at startup will allow you to bypass the blank screen issue because it gets initiated very quickly. So all you need to do in here, go to edit. You can see the script's wrong. You can't give a shortcut to home as the path. You have to give it the full path. So you just point it back to scripts, point it to the script and OK it. And now it has the full path. Then you just log out, log back in. And that script will come into effect. which is pointless in a VM, but it's showing you that that is what's going to happen. If you're wondering about this icon here, it's because on this particular build, I removed Blender temporarily. That will be included in the pr next proper build that I upload to SourceForge with hopefully a fix for the bootloader issue. So as we can see, we have the boot flag, so everything's good here. Whilst we're here, I might as well address this as well. You may find, obviously that's not gonna run in a VM, but you may find when you run NVIDIA settings, it doesn't ask you for a password, which means you're running it as the user. And a very simple quick fix, if you go to edit application, and at the front of this command, just type GKSU, and then save it. Now it will challenge you for a password and you'll be running that with elevated privileges when you change your settings and it will save to the correct location. Anyway, that's just a quick walkthrough on how to partition your drive. If you do get the error when trying to install, if you have an already populated disk and you use the Erase option in Calamare, sometimes it will fail because it cannot recreate the structure. I'm not quite sure why that's happening. I think it's down to the regressions in the KPM core change from three to four. Um, but manually partitioning the drive first, setting up your partitions as you'd like, resolves that issue. So you can use the Keep option within Calamare's. So I'm going to load that ISO back up and quickly go back through that with you. Okay, and you'll notice here we no longer have a split menu for installing. It's just the one boot option now. I'm trying a different uh, boot startup sequence to see if that resolves any issues here. Okay, so we come into system, gparted. Sort your drive out here. Obviously, if you've got more than one drive, you need to select it first. Make sure you're doing it to the right drive, otherwise you could hose your other installs. Now you can delete the partitions, as I showed previously. Okay, they're deleted. Now, it's down to you, it's personal preference, but I always start with a boot partition. Some of you may prefer to start with a swap partition. Now I'm gonna give that ten mit one oh two four zero. 
10 gig partition there and let it have the rest for home. So on this one, we apply that layout now. Manage the flags, enable boot. The boot flag's been set on the boot partition. That disk is now ready. So when we go to install, Don't use arrays and don't use replace, use manual. And then here you can use keep, boot, root, and home. In this scenario, you may prefer to use swap, but that's fine as well. You can initialize a swap partition first if you like and then you boot partition or for example if you do have if I do use the arrays option here this is the suggested layout that is included so on any disk now if you choose arrays you can elect to do a, a swap with no hibernate which will just give you a minimal swap or if you use with hibernate it's going to make a swap which is the defaults are 8.8 .8 gig this vm has 8 gig okay so it's done 8.8 .8 to give me a bit of headroom uh, normally it's double the size of your ram but um, i've noticed with calamari it tends to give you a little bit of headroom for the size of your RAM. So on my main rig, I have 32 gig of RAM. So it would make a 34 gig swap, which gives a little headroom for the swap. And, you know, some may argue it's wise to create a swap in case the system has to dump the entire memory for whatever reason. Um, but Calamari tends to put it on the end of the disk. You may not like that. So you may want to partition your drives with swap at the beginning, which can be quite useful in this instance no swap and this may produce the error I was talking about so I'm going to tell that boot let's see if it does it again now this is using replace and this is where the bootloader should not be installed so now you can see it's creating new so it's going to be formatting now and on a VM that appears to be working perfectly but I've noticed on some hardware on some drives when you're using the replace option and you have an existing partition layout it can fail and I, I'm not quite sure what's causing that but I do know there are regressions been introduced with the KPM4 um, the partitioning side of Calamari So this is going to work. The only thing that's not going to happen is the boot flag should not be set at the end of this, which I will show you. I'm going to pause this now and let this go through. Okay, so we're back. And this has gone through the bulk of the install now. This is just doing the driver side of things and the cleanup. As you can see, there are updates available here. Several, in fact, but when I reboot this, we shouldn't see any because that's what's happening now. It's installed, it's doing a system upgrade on the target. So, if it appears like it's stalled here, don't panic, it is doing its job in the background. And if you really want to see what's happening, you can start Calamare in a debug mode so you can actually see what's happening as it's doing it. I'll show you how to do that in a later video. So you can actually initiate this from the terminal with um, a certain set of commands and you will see the output of what is happening as Calamari is doing it. Which is useful for trying to find out errors within the install system as to why things aren't happening.
Okay, I'm going to pause this quickly and I'll come back. Okay, so now it says it's installing the bootloader. This was on a replace partition, remember, this second install is a replace partition. So there should be a difference here. Okay, so it's a successful install, but let's check the boot flags. See, no boot flags. So replace partition for some reason, and this is the regression I was talking about, is not setting the boot flag. So all we have to do before rebooting, before restarting the system, come back in, set the boot flag. Now the boot flag's on. Now we can shut down. Remove the ISO and boot back up and we should have a grub screen which we do, and we can boot back in. Okay, there we go. the boot flag so we're all good and as you can see the updates have been done so not only does it install but it also sets um, it also upgrades the system so you should be fully up to date when you log in okay so that's how we do that two different scenarios expressed there manually partitioning and letting calamari erase the disk the target disk um, showing you that you know the boot flag may need to be manually set until this regression is sorted out I do know the Calamari team are rewriting that part um, the module for that and hopefully in the very near future there will be less issues for everyone myself included so thank you very much for watching if you've got any comments, please leave them below and I will try to answer them as quickly and timely as I can. Um, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you very much.